news taking the garage out of garage sales. How the art of cleaning out the house is changing. Plus, a different approach to domestic violence. See what Crystal Police are now doing. But first, construction chaos all around Robbinsdale. I believe there's seven current projects going on right now. 12 News starts right now. Hello and thanks for joining us. Robbinsdale is certainly seeing its fair share of road construction. All the jackhammering and orange cones are causing headaches for motorists and homeowners. Sonia Goins has more on the construction chaos. By now, Robbinsdale residents are getting accustomed to hearing construction noise. We haven't seen this many different projects going on at one time. Robin Burkinis is a senior engineering technician for the city. I believe there's seven current projects going on right now. Some roads have two different projects going on at the same time, like the one on County Road 9. The Joint Waters Commission, they're replacing their line that has had two failures in the last several years. This so colorful map shows uh, some of the current the road projects. The light blue, that's our city project that we're doing, just a reconstruction of street and utilities. And of course, all the road construction means detours, like this one on 36 and Noble. It says road closed through traffic. So if you don't live here, there's no reason to be coming down here. A lot of drivers are blowing past the detour. As soon as one car goes, 10 more follow. Here we go, we got a whole nother line coming down. Car after car ignored the detour signs, even though Officer Annie Fa was in plain sight. What they're doing is they're passing the first set of signs, coming straight on through, and then coming to where the actual closure is and having nowhere to go. There are dead end streets on both sides. Drivers who disobeyed the signs are left stuck and confused. How do I get to North Memorial from here? Was it to North Memorial, you need to follow the detour tour signs at Noble. I want to go on France. To France? Yep, same thing. So go back to Noble and follow the detour signs around. All right. So if you go down 36 here to Noble Avenue. We even saw some drivers that were actually blowing through the road close signs, ending up here where crews are working on a sewer system. That's actually a 30-foot hole there. It's actually a misdemeanor, which um, is considered an arrest. But there is some light at the end of the road. Winter is around the corner. When the snow flies and you have to start worrying about driving in the snow, then all the construction will be done. In Robbinsdale, Sandy Goins, 12 News. And Robbinsdale police are stepping up patrols in detour areas to enforce speed limits. A new age-enhanced photo is out today, calling attention to an unsolved missing persons case in Maple Grove. Amy Sue Paniak disappeared 26 years today. The photo on the right shows what she might look like now. Amy was 13 when she disappeared from an Osseo gas station. She was with her father at the time. Marshall Midden says he used the bathroom, and when he returned, Amy was gone. Maple Grove police continue to investigate and have a new lead detective for the case. Hopefully just gaining a, a new fresh set of eyes will help out with maybe getting some new ideas and maybe some new leads that we could go to. But I hope we'll be able to solve the case. The case received much attention last summer when authorities dug up the backyard of the Maple Grove home where Paniak lived, as well as areas of the family's farm in Isanti County. Police have not said what prompted the searches or revealed whether anything was found. A Brooklyn Park man is one of seven people indicted for their roles in what authorities call a gang war. Anthony Doss is charged with drug trafficking and illegal gun possession. The indictment unsealed Tuesday alleges that Doss and the others were involved in at least five shootings in Minneapolis last summer. Investigators continue to look into the cause of a fire in a newer housing development in southwest Maple Grove. The fire Tuesday afternoon started in the garage of the home in the 6200 block of Alvarado Lane. No one was home at the time. Fire officials say the house will likely have to be torn down and rebuilt. The parties were about as varied as the people gathering at them for National Night Out and Night to Unite. The weather was picture perfect Tuesday night for neighbors to gather together and share dinner. This get together in Golden Valley was one of hundreds of block parties held throughout the Northwest Metro. And in Brooklyn Park, nearly 200 parties took place throughout the city. The evening gave police the opportunity to connect with residents at a time when relations have been shaky nationwide. At the Park Haven Apartments in Brooklyn Park, yeah. a crowd of hundreds gathered for food, Good time. Good food. some inflated fun, oh, 
an up-close look at some feathered friends from the Raptor Center. She has a sharp curved beak that she uses to rip up flesh and break the bones of her prey. And most importantly, a chance to get to know one another. We are kind of a neighborhood. We're a community and we just want everyone to be able to get, their, to, get to know their neighbors and maybe feel more comfortable about talking to them if issues arise. The party at this 176 unit apartment complex had the benefit of receiving money and volunteer help from a local church. We get our people involved. They can get out and just see, you know, what the different neighborhoods are like. And we're meeting a lot of new people, um, collaborating with them. And that's mainly what we're wanting to do is to collaborate with them. On a night like tonight, it's all about making personal connections. I'm the DA guy. Which is something Hennepin County Attorney Mike Freeman did during a brief appearance. But for local police officers like Laura Cook, National Night Out gives them a chance to change people's perception of them. It's a little bit of a different attitude, a different tone that goes into sometimes responding to 911 calls when situations are sometimes bad or sad or people need help and it's more of a crisis situation. Instead of it being a crisis situation, this was a night of fun, where whatever thoughts people had about law enforcement or each other, were set aside in the name of entertainment and fried chicken. At the end of the day, the people here are great, and overall, they're supportive of us. Well, many Brooklyn Park residents also received T-shirts with the hashtag #WeAreBrooklynPark to promote the city's new branding campaign. Local craft beer fans are awaiting not one, but two new tap rooms. In Robbinsdale, the people behind Wicked Wart Brewing have finalized the purchase of the vacant TCF Bank building from the city's Economic Development Authority. Wicked Wart plans to build a tap room at the West Broadway location, which is near popular restaurants such as Travail and Nona Rosa. The brewery also has plans to tear down the building's center section for patio seating. And over in Maple Grove, another hurdle is now cleared for a microbrewery to open there. The city council approved liquor licensing requirements for Omni Brewing. Omni is located on Deerwood Lane, north of Maple Tavern. It's on track to open by Labor Day. Coming up, preventing domestic violence before it escalates. Area police take a new approach. Then we hear from the Maple Grove VFW baseball team as they take aim at a state title. But first, the chance for showers and thunderstorms increases Thursday night into Friday. Each day in the United States, 10 women are killed due to domestic violence. Crystal Police recently launched a domestic abuse response team, also known as DART, to connect with victims before the violence turns deadly. Alexandra Renslow sat down with Crystal Officer Tracy Lee Faust to find out how the program works. Thanks, Delane. Tracy, when police go out to a domestic abuse report, that is really when this DART or domestic abuse response team kicks in, it sounds like. Can you explain exactly what happens with this team and what they do? Well, after a, a domestic arrest occurs or after a domestic-related incident, within about 24 hours or so, an officer will go out and meet with that victim face-to-face. -face. We'll go through a series of questions just to make sure that all the details, all the information of the incident is documented in that report. And then also, we give the victims a list of resources that they can capitalize on to help them get out of a domestic situation. We give them information on court orders, that would bar a suspect from coming back and having contact with the victim. And then we also give them a safety packet, just different tips that they should take to keep themselves safe. And it sounds like that follow-up is key in preventing the cycle from reoccurring. But how important then is it that is it for that initial call to come in of the incident? It's absolutely crucial. And that's why when we go out to do our DART follow-up, we emphasize with the victim that they're doing the right thing by calling us. Excellent. And tell me, ultimately, this program is less than a year old. Are you starting to see some results? Do you have any statistics in terms of domestic abuse cases in Crystal? Yes, we've actually seen a 20% increase in domestic-related ar arrests this year compared to last year and the year before. And that's exactly what we expected because a lot of our victims and suspects are repeat coming through the system. They're repeat victims, repeat suspects. And so now the victims are actually calling us instead of just covering the incident up. 
So you're seeing an uptick right now because people are getting more comfortable calling in. Ultimately, you hope that goes down. Yes, yes. We'll reevaluate next year and hopefully we'll start to see a decrease in those numbers. Tracy Lee Faust of the Crystal Police Department, thanks so much for joining us Thank today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, coming up, how garage sales are moving out of the garage and into social media. But first, we meet a Maple Grove man who keeps order in the fast-growing sport of lacrosse. Jay Wilcox is in next. Welcome back. Jay's here now at Sports, and sounds like there's a local baseball team in Maple Grove that's getting ready for a big tournament. Yeah, they've had a great summer so far, and I really would like to cap it off in style, too. The Maple Grove VFW baseball team rolls into the state tournament with some momentum. They were undefeated in the 26-team District 7 tournament. Now they're gearing up for the state tournament, which starts Thursday in New Ulm. Maple Grove had to rally in a couple of the district games, and they've won 17 straight. It's a good feeling to have another tournament to play. The goal is to be playing as long as you can, and only 10 teams get to play in August for VFW, so it's a great thing to make it out of the district playoffs and be able to go down to New Ulm and play some more for state. The team comes into state with a 33-9 record. Two years ago, Maple Grove won the state VFW title, and this team has the same goal. They have a lot of confidence in the guys they'll send to the mound. We have really good pitching and fielding. Uh, that's what we practice on most throughout practices. And then our hitting ends up coming through pretty good. So pitching and fielding, I'd say. Everybody's been contributing on this team. And when everybody's doing something in the game, like if someone comes in and pinch runs and gets a stolen base or something, it'll help the whole team. And our pitching has been unreal. Like Marty, Hutch, and Gooley are just throwing strikes and pitching great games. Uh, this team has kind of been surprising in that we're pretty young. We have a, a the majority of these guys are only 15 year olds, so we have a lot of them coming back. But I think our strength so far has been our pitching. Our uh, big three have been uh, pretty consistent in throwing strikes and uh, getting outs. Maple Grove's first state game is Thursday at 3.30 p.m. in New Ulm. Minnesota American Legion champion Wyzetta was back on the field Wednesday in North Dakota. After a two-hour rain delay in the first game of the Central Plains Regional in Bismarck, Wyzetta lost 6-5 against Creighton Prep, the Nebraska champion. Wyzetta is scheduled to play again Thursday morning at 10, although more rain is expected in Bismarck. A lot of local men and women are finding that working as an official is a good way to stay involved in sports. On this week's edition of our official business series, we meet a man who is enjoying his time on the field. This week on Official Business, we meet a man who works a sport that's surging in popularity, making officials very much in demand. All right, fellas, right there, that is five yards. So that's the distance you want to stay apart on the restarts tonight, OK? My name is Paul. This is Dimitri. We're going to be your refs. For Paul Kuhn of Maple Grove, a steady diet of lacrosse games is a good thing. Well, my son started playing, I think, in fourth or fifth grade, so I really kind of fell in love with the sport. And then about three years ago, um, the YZ Lacrosse Association sent out an email on behalf of the Officials Association saying, hey, we really need adult officials. So if you know the game, if you're into sports at all and you have any interest, please contact us. And I thought, well, all my kids are in college. I love the sport. And um, yeah, I'm going to give it a shot. Sit. Possession. Ohio native Paul was active in football, basketball, and track growing up and in triathlons as an adult. Staying involved in sports was a natural fit for him. You know, being a former athlete, it still kind of fuels the uh, competitive embers a little bit because you, you, know, you got to make sure you're on task during the game and you got to get, you know, maybe a little psyched up, especially when you're doing high school varsity games and whatnot. So, yeah, it's been really a lot of fun. I'd say good job, guys. While a lot of kids are growing up with lacrosse in the Twin Cities now, most of their parents didn't. Kuhn says the flow of the game came pretty naturally to him, but it isn't the easiest sport to call. Most officials ref multiple sports. They've said this is by far the most difficult just because of the rules and how big the field is and it's a you know continuous play game, so you're really running pretty hard throughout the course of a game. In addition to his regular job, Paul Kuhn, like other lacrosse officials, is getting plenty of work in stripes. You know, it's the fastest growing sport in the U.S. at, at all levels, so youth, high school, and collegiate. So getting officials is, is at a premium right now. 4-0. 
Watch for another official business next Wednesday on 12 News. So definitely a sport that a lot of people are still learning, especially the adults. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Jay. Still ahead, are garage sales a thing of the past? While that may not be the case, the way of handling them is changing. We'll explain next. like to find garage sale bargains but don't like the hassle then this next story is for you. As Shannon Slatten explains, selling and buying items has moved from the garage to social media. Some of these books are ones that they don't read anymore. Hey, what's this? When Courtney Nisnik cleaned out the bookcase, she didn't set the books aside and wait to host a garage sale. Last summer I did a garage sale and I made a ton of money. I made like $600 at the garage sale but it was a lot of work. A ton, a ton of work, and I still had a ton of stuff left over. Instead, she posted the books in a garage sale on Facebook. This is all I'm selling right now. It took me just a couple minutes to take a picture with my cell phone, post it on the web. Minutes later, a buyer contacted Courtney to buy them. It moves so fast, and it, to me, it's just amazing that you can have something just done. And this is a post that I created so that people can go on here and list their garage sales. Val Platt is one of the administrators of the 15,000 strong Maple Grove Plymouth garage sale site. I think it's helping people to buy and sell things quickly um, and to make a little money too. There are rules when you post something to sell. Everything has to list the location and the price. Posting a good picture always helps too. Then you decide with the buyer when and where you will meet up. You can also post if you are ISO in search of an item. There's a lot of times where by the time the garage sale rolls around, a huge chunk of the items have already been sold on the site. The secret to success seems to be staying connected to know when a deal goes through and being able to quickly respond if a deal doesn't. The downfall to online garage sales is they say they're interested, they say they're gonna come, and then it doesn't always happen. If I'm looking for a bike, Bike. But chances are, if you bump your post back up, you'll quickly find another buyer. Most people are on Facebook almost every day. This is just very easy for them to look on this site as they're doing their thing on Facebook. So I think it's a win-win all around. In Maple Grove, Shannon Slatten, 12 News. I think I want to get that free barbecue the grill. The free grill looks like a pretty good deal. What a great idea, a good way to share. Like Craigslist or Facebook, whatever it takes. I'm taking mental notes. Right. <laughs> that does it for us. Thanks so much for joining us. Community Corner is up next. <laughs>